there's something kind of peaceful and you can really feel a connection in some way. So I'm really, really glad. I'm glad that we're here. Hello everybody and welcome back to The Misty Show. Today's video is a special video. I'm in Fairmount, Indiana, the home of James Dean. And now he wasn't born in Fairmount, Indiana. He was actually born in Marion, Indiana. Um, and But he was raised in here in Fairmount. When he was nine, his mother passed away and they were actually living in California, he and his dad. And his mom passed away and um, he was sent back to Fairmount to live with his aunt and uncle and they raised him from about nine years old. So they, he was like their, their, their other son. So this place is a magical place. I haven't been here in over 20 years. I'm ashamed to say I live in Indiana. Um, I was actually born and raised about 35 miles from Fairmount. I used to come here a lot when I was in high school. I had a little bit of an obsession with James Dean uh, growing up. I was kind of that weird kid that I was about the only person in my grade school that liked James Dean. And actually at the end of the video, I'm gonna share one of my uh, scrapbooks that I had that I had saved um, when I was younger. But we are just gonna spend the day here in Fairmount. We're gonna to go to the museum and just take in the sights of this magical little town here in Fairmount, Indiana. One thing that you can do when you are walking around Fairmount is they've got these little signs right here and you can read them and it says, like this one right here, they are the James Dean visual tour. Jimmy was here. James Dean writing his check. Uh, CZ125 motorcycle in front of the Citizens Exchange Bank, which is right there. And there is the picture of him in 1947. Probably about right. Right there. It's pretty cool. We're gonna go across the street here. And looks to be, the, the, now this building right here is where the new museum is going to be. Um, it's not open yet. It's gonna open, I believe in July, uh, September. And um, I will put a link for their information in the description. Um, there's gonna be a lot more artifacts in this museum than in the current museum, and the current museum actually has a lot, but let's go look at this other sign right here. Honestly, when you're walking down the road, you can see, I'll go, there's some graffiti, but even down here, there are more murals, kind of everywhere you go. So this one, this is a photo that I'm trying to get. So James Dean walking along East Washington Street, which, as you can see, Washington Street is right here um, with the Citizens Exchange Golden Dome in the background. This was in 1955, so essentially, he is right there. There is the edge of that building. Now, that, that awning part was not there, but like where that portrait of him is, there was a... Um, I'll put it up in the I'll put it I'll put it up here side by side as you can see now obviously this rude street light is blocking some of the way but that's where he was 1955 you know I am a vintage seller that's my that's my full-time job here's a thrift store in Fairmount so we're going to see what they've got. Even in the thrift store, James Dean's here. Well, he's just on the wall. He's not, he's not here. He's just there on the wall. All right, we have arrived here at the James Dean Museum. I have not been here in probably 20 years, which is I'm, I'm ashamed to admit because I don't live, I mean, I live about three hours away from it now, but my hometown's 30 minutes away. Also, Garfield, Jim Davis was a, a Fairmount um, 
resident as well. And he no longer is, but that's where he was raised as well. And throughout the Grant County, they do have different Garfield statues that you can get your picture with. So yeah, here it is. Here's the information on it. This is the cool cat Garfield because he's James Dean. Get it? James Dean. Garfield is dressed in honor of his fellow Fairmount native, 1950s film star, James Dean. So there are other Garfields on the Garfield Trail. And so this is pretty cool. So here you are, Garfield, James Dean style. James Dean Museum, including Garfield. My mother and father-in-law are with us today too. All right. I have a feeling I'm gonna be doing some damage in the gift shop. Hey, Jimmy, we'd like to go see your museum now. So I'm not able to film video while we're inside the museum, but I'm gonna put pictures in and um, I'll do a little bit of narration of things that are in the museum. It's just chock full of so many great mementos. And when the new museum opens, there's gonna be even more. So you must, must come. So let's go in and let's explore. So admission is $5 to the museum. Oh, pin on the map. I don't think we'll fit. I think there's a lot of people from Indiana has visited the museum. Yes. Oh, here. So we're going to write our name down. Yeah. 20, what is the date today? The 25th? 20, yep. How are you guys? I'm going to write the Misty show. Yeah, I have a feeling that I'm going to be doing a little bit of Damage here in the gift shop. Thank you. I love that. Do you like that? I do. Be a rebel and get a museum membership. All right, we start off in the museum at some of Jimmy's baby clothes, which is an amazing thing to see. All of these items that have been kept all of these years since the 1930s is still on display. His birth announcement. That to me is just amazing simply amazing a rock that he found when he was playing in Santa Monica Beach as a child still there this is a picture of his grandmother and him when they accompanying his mother's body back to Fairmount and as you can see these were plates and things that were on the train we have some of Mildred Dean's funeral cards and notes this is a little cup that Jimmy had when he was growing up on the Winslow farm here we have an orchid painting that was done for Adeline Nall that was painted for her from Jimmy. This was one of his high school projects that was still on display. Some of his track and field ribbons also on display in the museum. Some of his projects, early inventions, and some of his hand drawings from when he was in school. This was the motorcycle that he purchased when he was in Fairmount. Moving on to some of the more Hollywood memorabilia, this is phone numbers of Liz Taylor, George Stevens, people he had worked with. The Villa Capri was one of the restaurants that he hung out with when he was in Hollywood, and we can see he has signed that and wrote a little note there on that menu. This is the Kindle bust, the one that is in Hollywood. This is a replica of that. Here we have some more of his clothes. This is something that he wore on set during Giant. There is the belt. There's lots of pictures with him wearing that belt floating around. This is just another angle when he was on the set during Giant and Marfa, Texas. There's another picture of the fringe jacket. It's just so cool to see these things all in one place. Some of his shaps and uh, one of the promotional things from Giant. These were articles that were in his apartment when he was living in New York. Again, he brought those bongo drums back with him to Fairmount and that's him playing the drums in the field. These are all, all images from things that he had in his apartment. And this is a letter to Marcus that he wrote to him kind of telling him about don't draw pictures of war and things like that draw more poignant pictures so it was really cool to see that correspondence that he wrote to his young cousin this is one of his racing 
uh, suits that he wore in one of his races. This is a picture of him and Rolf Weatherich on the day that he died, September 30th, 1955. We've got some movie posters and some more clothes and just some different artwork and things to see in the museum. It's just a really, really cool place. This was a sink that was in one of his apartments that he lived in, this actual sink, one of his apartments in New York. That was a pretty cool thing to see. And then this rocking chair, there's a picture of him sitting in this rocking chair on the Winslow farm. So that is cool. And he bought this little telephone desk as a gift to Marcus and Hortense. And it's here we have a locket that was given to Jimmy from Pierre Angeli, which is so many people say that that was the true love of his life. She ended up marrying Vic Damone, really broke Jimmy's heart, but that was a picture of them together. These are boots that he wore when he was filming Giant. And we have um, the, a picture of him wearing that shirt. That shirt is on display and so is that watch. Here we've got his overnight shaving bag with his initials on it. And then this is the house that he was born in in Marion, Indiana. And they have the gables from that house on display as well. To me, this is fascinating. These items were found in Jimmy's de desk on September 30th, 1955. We've got different letters. It's just amazing to me that these were just left on his desk and now here they are. So just more ephemera that was left on his desk at the time of his death. This was the jacket. This was his jacket, the actual jacket that he, he that you see in this picture. This note was written by Jimmy a day or two before he died in a list of all the people that are going to go with him on that trip to Salinas, the trip that, that final trip. This was a head from the engine that broke James Dean's Porsche Speedster during his race. So more of his racing memorabilia in the museum. It's just a, such a a wealth of information to see. You gotta go. You gotta, gotta go to the Fairmount Museum. Well, that was a great, we are gonna go over to the cemetery and we're gonna check out the James Dean Gallery. It's another museum here and we're gonna walk through and check that one out as well and just still kind of see what we can explore here in Fairmount, Indiana. All right, so now we are just a couple blocks down the road and we're at the James Dean Gallery. It's a beautiful Victorian house. It's all one person's private collection of James Dean memorabilia. I honestly don't know that I've ever been here, but it looks pretty amazing. And let me show you this on, you can do it, there's a QR code, so you can get more information if you want. Look at that, the James Dean Gallery. Oh, look at that. That's James Dean, that's a big James Dean right there. Pee Wee Herman's here too? Well, it's gonna be a banner day. Oh, we can get a free map to, I'm assuming, James Dean places here in Fairmount. I about rung the doorbell, probably shouldn't do that. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, wow. Hi, Jimmy. So it said this was a doctor bag that belonged to the doctor who delivered him. There's a window sill from Fairmount High School. We will go by where that was, but I actually have a brick from the high school as well. As you can see, this is like a reenactment or reincarnation. That's not the word, right word. A diorama. <laughs> That's the right word of the crash. You can see Don up turnip seeds, sedan, and Jimmy and Rolf Weatherich in the Porsche Spider right before the crash. You can see Jimmy's peeping behind this fence. See that? It's sort of like in Rebel Without a Clause. I don't know if this was the actual fence, but I mean, it sure does look like it. Oh yeah, it's this is the original gate from uh, Rebel Without a Clause. That is pretty freaking amazing. That is actually a replica of the soapbox car that Jimmy and Marcus played with in the snow. So this is a sculpt kind of of his Broadway play. Before he was a movie star, he was in The Immortalist in 1954. And Kenneth Kendall, Kenneth Kendall made or sculpted this, but he, Kenneth Kendall, has a display over here too, and he's actually the one that did the bust um, at Griffith, uh, Griffith Park Observatory, that bust. So that's Kenneth Kendall. This is like his little section here, some of his 
um, hats and things here, so that's pretty cool to see too. And some more of the artwork that Kenneth Kendall made. Come back to the five and dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean. I was actually in this play when I was in high school. I will see if I can find a picture of that. But we had little uh, jackets that said, uh, gosh, I can't even remember what it said, but we all had satin jackets because we were in the James Dean uh, club memories. It just dawned on me. I was in that play a long time ago, though. So this museum is really kind of cool because the, the other one had a lot of like, I mean, this, they do have artifacts too. Like I'm going to show you over there in a minute, but they have a lot of like collections. So we've got like the nesting dolls and the glasses and the buttons and the watches and that sort of thing. And there's more buttons and things up there. Um, and this is a reproduction leather jacket. They actually have the actual one at the James Dean um, Museum. And this one is a replica of like what he has right there. Right there. When you go back here, at the end of the house is an antique store. So that's like, that's like this is like my the my two favorite things combined into one: antiques and James Dean's. So we've got a nice collection of different books, which I myself have a collection of all of these Hollywood books. Oh my gosh, Lana Turner, Marlon Brando, Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, wow. All right. So we're going to take a look at all of the things in here. And there's also a little screening room where you can watch some videos and clips of some James Dean TV shows and clips and that sort of thing. Vermont. So Lenny is the guy that's working here at the front and he is so creative. He makes all of these like bottle cap pieces. Here's his, all of his, in, in his Etsy, his Instagram, Facebook. He has a YouTube as well. And, um, okay, Reverend Rebel, this is his little shop. I wanted to show you this. Oh my gosh, I'm dying over this. Look, at these are vintage sheets turned into a shirt. Now, if you know me at all, I talk all the time that I love vintage sheets and I sleep like Cabbage Patch, Care Bear, Garfield, don't I mark, pillowcases on my bed all the time. But I love that look. And Lenny, and he made these too. Oh, Mark, there's an Elvis one. Oh, Elvis. Elvis and James Dean all wrapped up in one. Look at that dreams i mean was i meant was i destined to own a vintage sheet shirt made by lenny i don't know turn around i mean it's raggedy ann and look garfield and that reminds me of my son because he loved the bob shoulder and we've got care bears on this side do i need it will i wear it I mean, I think I will. I'm going to think about it. What do you think, Mark? I don't know. I, do you guys like the shirt? Well, that was an amazing place. You must come here. You must come here, the James Dean Gallery. Oh, there's, there's a dead little piney right there. <laughs> and I met Lenny. So I put all Lenny's information in the description. I bought a sheet t-shirt. I did buy it. I couldn't resist it. I put all his information in the description as well he gave us a map so we are going to head up and look at a few more places before we hit the grave site and like i said at the end of this video i'm going to pull out my archives and show you one of my scrapbooks that i kept when i was a little girl and when i first started my james dean obsession but i got a little information from lenny apparently they're going to be doing james dean jeopardy here in july i'm a master at jeopardy i might have to come back for that james dean jeopardy would be even better I could probably answer those questions. All right, now we are at the James Dean Memorial Park. It was dedicated September 30th. You know, that's a, an important day in James Dean history. 1995. And it is a replica of the bust that is in Griffith Park Observatory in California. And there it is. I've been to Griffith Park. I've seen the actual one. 
Um, it's a, it is not a monument to a rebel. Those were only roles played by James Dean. He was an American original who, who on a basis of high school honors and in a period of five years, time rose to the very pinnacle of the theatrical profession. And through the magic of motion pictures lives in legend. This monument is dedicated as well to all the loyal fans who contribute, who continue to come from around the world to pay their respects to Dean and Fairmont, which has become the world's hometown. In early in 1955, James Dean visited the studio of artist Kenneth Kendall, uh, and his question was, would you be interested in sculpting me? The artist began work the night the actor died. You can see Kenneth Kendall's, and we saw his artifacts, some of his artifacts that was in the museums, but this sculpture, Kenneth Kendall started the night, September 30th. 1955. I mean, not this particular one, obviously. This one is a copy, but the one that he was commissioned to do, he started it the night that he died. So, it's just a nice little peaceful little park. Here, right off of Main Street, Fairmount. In this lot, right here, here are the original steps to Fairmount High School. So this was the high school that James Dean attended when he lived in Fairmount, Indiana. He graduated in the class of 1949, and there was an effort for many years to try to save the school. It was just in disrepair. I, they, were, they were selling bricks. They're trying to raise money to be able to save it. Looks like, I'm just assuming that maybe that's a portion of maybe the auditorium. I'm going to assume it was maybe built at a later time um, when the high school was still open and that's why that was still able to be saved. I'm I'm not don't I don't know that for a fact but this is where the high school used to stand and I'll insert a picture of the high school. I actually have one of the bricks that I bought back in the when they first started selling trying to sell the bricks as a um, as a fundraiser but we have another one of the visual tour signs here. There's a picture of uh, Jimmy when he was in high school. That was his senior portrait, 1949. He attended Fairmount High School from the seventh grade to the 12th grade and graduated in 1949. Um, this is his graduation photo from the black and gold yearbook. The Fairmont High School building at 201 South Vine Street was commissioned in 1898 and it closed on May 30th, 1986 and it was demolished in 2016. Say that I got my brick probably in the late 90s. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, but another monument to James Dean that was attempted to be saved, but sometimes it just isn't in the cards. But I like that they kept the steps though, and they put that plaque right in front of it, so that's kind of cool. All right, now we are at the park, and this park is where they have the museum days. Every September, towards the end of September, or the last weekend of September, in honor and memory of James Dean's passing in September, they have a huge car show. And this park, you can see the water tower in the background. We've got James Dean and Garfield because Jim Davis was from Fairmount too. This is the park and it is just filled with hundreds. Oh, here's a classic car alert coming up right there. Hundreds of vintage and classic cars. They even have replicas of um, James Dean's car that he passed away in. Look at that, that is pretty cool. So this is the park. It's wall to wall people. Lots of people come here. But there in the back, in the distance, is the water tower. Now we're going to head over to a couple other memorable stops in the James Dean journey here in Fairmount. We're going to see uh, the church that he attended when he was here. He was a Quaker. He attended Back Creek Fen Friends Church and um, the motorcycle shop where he purchased his motorcycle. And we're also gonna go by the Winslow Farm and we're gonna wrap things up at the cemetery. Okay, now I'm standing in front of Carter, well, the former place of Carter Motors. And this is the site where James Dean bought his very first motorcycle. I think he paid $300 for it back in the day, which was quite a bit of money then. And now we've got this beautiful sign um, that is hanging up there now. Now apparently, this is the 9th Street Gang Car Club Clubhouse. So that's pretty cool that they've kind of utilized this kind of historic 
building and you know they're gathering here pretty neat this was one of the last places that he visited on his last trip to fairmount before his passing all right friends our next stop is at back creek friends church and now this is a an, a newer addition but this right here is the old church back creek friends it's a quaker church it was a quaker church back when jimmy attended here uh, the winslows were they were of the quaker religion and um the winslow farm we're going to go to that next it's just down the road i mean with well jimmy used to walk from the farm he would come to the church and then the motorcycle shop is just on the other side of this white house so he would hang out at the motorcycle repair shop and he attended church here at Back Creek Friends. Our next stop is the Winslow Farmhouse where Jimmy was raised. Now I'm in standing next to the Winslow Homestead. This is a farm where Jimmy was raised. Um, and his cousin, Marcus Jr., still lives there to this day. He's a very gracious man. If you ever see him out in the public and say hi, he's he's a lovely, lovely man. And the whole family is honestly really, really lovely people. It's a beautiful home. And my goodness, the grounds are beautiful. There are a lot of pictures of Jimmy when he was little playing on the farm. He and Marcus built a soap box car and he just spent so much time here and actually the barns here are the barns and in i believe it's this barn right here there there are fingerprints and handprints when he was a child um in the video i will link um scott michaels did a wonderful video he actually came out here and he was able to interview marcus and i'm going to link that video in the description it is a fascinating video and you get to hear marcus's point of view of being raised with jimmy and this is just, it's such a peaceful, beautiful, oh, are those real swans? <gasps> Look at that. I don't know if you're real swans or if you're cement swans, but you're still cute. But anyway, gorgeous place. And there are ponds back there um, that I am certain Jimmy probably swam in when he was a child, but beautiful Indiana farmland here in Fairmount at the Winslow Farm. Mm. It's just, it's kind of surreal being here, honestly. All right, it's just amazing. Okay, we are at Park Cemetery here in Fairmount, Indiana, and I am standing in the front of James Dean's grave. You would think that it would be a little bit more of a massive gravesite for such an iconic man, but you know, deep down he was just a country boy. This is where he grew up. This is where he considered home. And so he's returned back to home. And now this is not the original tombstone. The original tombstone was st stolen. I think it was stolen a, a couple of times. And um, so this one is, I don't know when this one was placed, but the original one did look pretty much the same. And you can see people have chiseled away um, and kissed it. And, um, but here he is, James Byron Dean, born 1931, died 1955. He's also um, here next to his, his dad. Now, his mother is buried in Marion, Indiana, which is about, oh, about half an hour or so away. Um, Winton died in 1995. He did remarry. His second wife was Ethel. And lived quite a long, I mean, he lived up until 1995, so he was, do that math, Mark. He was 88 years old when he passed away. And then we also have... Hortense and Marcus, which was um, Hortense. Now, Jimmy did call Hortense and Marcus mom and dad. You know, like I said, they raised him from the point of nine years old up until his passing. They, you know, they, it was pretty hard for them, obviously, when, when Jimmy had passed away. You know, they considered him their son. And uh, they were lovely, lovely people. They were married June 15th, 1924. Hortense was born in 1901. She died in 1991. 
and Marcus was born in 1900 and died in 1976. You know, so I've been here before when there's been all kinds of various objects laid on the on the stone on the on his grave. So I'm gonna put a stone. Hey, Jimmy. It's been a long time since I've been here. Oh, and someone left him a get out of jail free card. So I think it's important if you're coming here, just have a seat, take a moment, do a little bit of reflection. It is a lovely cemetery. Honestly, it's nice and it's quiet and it's just kind of, it's very surreal sometimes to be, to know that basically an American icon, that someone that you have always just admired and have followed for so long and you're basically sitting right next to where they are laying at rest and I don't know there's something kind of peaceful and you can really feel a connection in some way so I'm really really glad I'm glad that we're here so this is a monument to Cal Dean a relative of Jimmy and there is a picture and I'll pop it up and I think it's a about, he's standing about where I'm standing now. There's snow on the ground and it's winter time. But he, you know, obviously his last name is Dean. And he played Cal Trask. So it was very kind of fitting when he came to visit in, um, when he was filming, uh, came to visit Fairmount and he stopped here and got a photo with Lil Marcus there in the background um, at Cal Dean's grave. You know, and Jimmy had a great sense of humor and he was a little bit more into the macabre, which you know, a lot of us are kind of like that. There's a photo of him and I'll insert it where he came, when he came to visit Fairmount, he went to the mortuary. It's actually the same mortuary where they prepared his body and he posed in a casket. You know, he was a weirdo just like the rest of us. Okay guys, that was our journey here to Fairmount, Indiana. If you're ever able to make the visit, make sure that you do. There are so many things to do, so many things to do that are free. The people are so gracious and so lovely and they're so proud of their hometown, their hometown boy. And so they will, they're, they're happy to talk to you and, and give you, tell you places to go and visit. But I'm gonna go ahead and in, in, in this po portion, we will come back when I'm back down at home and I will pull out my scrapbook and we'll go through one of my scrapbooks that I had when I was a young child about Jim, James Dean. All right, we're gonna magically be transported home. Hey, we're back here in where I live now in Southern Indiana and I have two of my James Dean scrapbooks. So let's go through some of my memories of James Dean. Okay, I just opened up this first one and I've got these little pictures taped. Some of these are pictures that I uh, I had taken on my like old camera and some of them a lot of them are just photocopies this is a picture actually that my mom drew it's a pencil drawing and she did this in 1988 uh, so just she also did this one of Jimmy in Rebel Without a Cause just like little snippets and I wrote growing up England among re England resident among winners at the James Dean Festival. The only thing that I wish I would have done is like had the dates when some of these clippings were done. The this was in the 80s, probably around 1988 as well during the museum days. This was uh James Dean's very first card. It's a 1949 Ford four door and it says that he drove this car back and forth to high school to the Fairmount High School when he um, was living and going to Fairmount High School these are pictures here this is my dad walking down the street at Fairmount during museum days that is me and my friend Kelly walking down the street this is the bank so we're walking on the sidewalk right here to the bank and the bank is where I showed you that picture where James Dean kind of was walking in front of that. This was the Winslow Farm back in 1988. 
or in the 80s at some, the late 80s at some point. This is a different time this was taken because this is winter now. I do believe that these pictures were taken during his birthday celebration. They do a birthday celebration in February for him. And then we're jumping back. This is a picture of my friend Kelly and I in um, at Fairmount High School uh, before it was torn down. There was a big like lawsuit um, about his image being stolen and used for various things. And so Marcus uh, was one of the people that kind of got all that under control. Um, this was a poster that I had hanging in my bedroom. <laughs> this is me at his grave in the 80s. This is me in front of Hortense and Marcus. Now this is before Hortense has pa had passed away. And I do have a picture of me and um, his aunt Hortense. I was able to meet her. This is a little bit later. So this was at a different time, a couple of years apart. More museum days. And then this was me in front of a replica of the spider that Jimmy had died in. Just another picture there. And then here's my other James Dean book with more articles and cutouts. This was me in front of an art installation that was done at Museum Days. There's the James Dean Gallery. This was Bob Pulley. Bob Pulley was, he was actually one of the pallbearers from Jimmy's funeral, but he was one of Jimmy's um, high school friends. Played on the basketball team with him. I did have the chance to meet um, Mr. Pulley uh, it, back in the 80s. He had given me his card. He was an antique dealer. This is one of the things that he did with like um, antiquities and things like that. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool because my parents were antique dealers. And so it was just kind of cool. But I, I had the honor of meeting uh, Bob Pulley. And then this is a picture of me and Hortense. And then this is me. And there is uh, Miss Hortense Winslow. And back in the 80s, this was during his February uh, birthday celebration. They ended up showing the film Rebels Out of Cause uh, during that birthday celebration. And I also, I don't have a picture with her, unfortunately, but on this day is when the day that I also met Adeline Nall. And Adeline Nall was Jimmy's drama teacher when he went to Fairmount High School. And I remember she looked at me and she said, you want to be an actress, don't you? And I, I, I always, that like always stays in my brain. So that was an honor. And I wish I had a picture of her, but that is me standing there next to um, Hortense Marcus had passed away um, at the time that that picture was taken. More me standing in front of the spider. And then this is me standing in front of the Ford, the 1949 or 1940s Ford. This was a story that I had wrote and I actually won. I won a little prize. Um, I, I was in fourth or fifth grade and I did a book report it was like a young author's celebration, and I did mine on James Dean. Everybody else in the fourth grade was doing theirs on, I don't know, basketball, and and I don't know. I did mine on James Dean, so I'm not going to spare you the, the, the torment of me reading this to you. I wrote this when I was in fourth grade, and it's typed on a typewriter. On a typewriter. We don't, that, that, that's our, an archaic uh, art form now. Oh, look, there is uh, Eartha Kitt. Again, these are all just photocopies of things that interest me or things that I had uh, collected over the years of James Dean. More newspaper articles. This was during the parade during museum days. There, They had a lookalike um, sit in, in the spider. And then this was um, an ambulance. I don't know what the significance. I don't want to say that that was like, the same ambulance, but there's an ambulance, an older ambulance. And these postcards are so funny because you can see all of like the little holes. I had hung these in my locker on bulletin boards and they're just riddled with holes. That's so funny. I don't know. This is like the cover of a James Dean magazine. I don't know where the magazine went, but that's still in there. More newspaper articles. Fairmount Historical Museum, Museum Days. This was in 1992. Oh, look, there's my script for Come Back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean. I played Edna. Yeah, look, I think I even have my highlighted lines in here too. I was Edna, Edna then, because there was an Edna now and an Edna then. This is like stage 
stage directions for that play back in the, uh, I think it was in 92. There's a memorial bike ride, another James. Oh, look, these are the playbill from the Anderson Maid Stage Theater in 1992. Come back to the five and dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean. Edna then, Misty Nevin. That is my, uh, my maiden name. Oh, there's another one. I have two programs. Wish I had a picture. I don't have any pictures. This is just another history on James Dean written by a James Dean historian. So those are my scrapbooks from way back when. Okay, guys. So thank you so much for our little trip to Fairmount, Indiana. I hope that you enjoyed it. It's a lovely place. If you ever get the chance to go, make sure that you do. Um, I will link all of the places that we had visited in the description. I'll also link Scott's channel in the description as well and the link to that video. You don't want to miss that. It's a great, great video if this kind of thing interests you at all. I highly recommend. I'm also going to put at the end of the video just a little musical video of from the farmhouse to the cemetery. Uh, he would walk from the farmhouse to the church to the motorcycle shop and then I mean, his final resting place is in the cemetery, but just going to put that in there. Just as it's just a, a beautiful, it was a beautiful day. And so I just wanted to share that with you as well. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Make sure that you're subscribed if you're not, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.